three, two, one. But wait, what about oh. the dad jokes? All jokes. It wasn't that good. It wasn't, it wasn't that good. Hello everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, writer of words, recorder of videos, and changer to the other video thing, because our webcam There we are. Welcome to our weekly live stream, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Online Role-Playing Adventures. I am joined, as always, by my wonderful friends, Chris, playing Valrobin, the Eladrin Bard of Eloquence. Hello! Heather playing Frey, the Halfling Barbarian of the Beast. Ah! Rochelle playing Celeste, the Half-Orc Sun Soul Monk. Ra Hello. Raymond playing Edmund, the human alchemist artificer. He was muted. Is extremely blurry. Oh, there you are. Yeah, and everyone's like. Oh, <laughs> good. Raymond's so and Heather's focus thing is making me feel a little. Reese very... playing Thimbleweed, the gnome swarm keeper ranger. Hello! Stream <laughs> our sessions live on YouTube every Friday evening. Watch all of our D&D live series as well as reviews and Let's Plays on my YouTube channel. Read weekly session recaps at RogueWatson.com. Watch my behind-the-scenes, no-players-allowed live series, Crafting Icewind Dale, every Thursday. Head on over to our live post-session discussion, Frostside Chat, after our show tonight. You can also listen to all of these D&D uh, shows with the Rogue Watson podcast. That's right. Rogue Watson podcast. Available There's wherever pod you get your podcasts. <laughs> You can follow Where me do on... I get my podcast? You can... <laughs> I can't answer that. It's up to you. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at Rogue Watson and join our official Discord server with invite link into the description below. That's right. There's an official Discord server. If you'd like to support the channel, please check out patreon.com slash Rogue Watson. Shouts to new patrons this week, Richard and Furkan. For our campaign, we use Roll20.net for video chat. We use Discord. And for streaming, I use Open Broadcaster software with Streamlabs. Music is by Kevin McCloud and our amazing original character art was done by Jimmy McClure. Previously on Icewind Dale, Rime of the Frostmaiden, the marshals arrived at the Sunblight map location to find an imposing 200-foot-tall fortress carved into the mountains and a winding staircase hewn from the mountain leading up 100 feet to the entrance halfway up the building. Another Dwerger party was returning up ahead, and the party overheard interesting talk about Zardarok's increasing paranoia and about a visiting clan leader named Grandolfa. Edmund devised a plan to get them inside, using Disguise Self to transform into Dearth Sunblight, one of Zardarok's sons, whom the party had slain in East Haven. He strode up to the guard and spoke of how he was the sole survivor. The guard opened the door, and the rest of the party was able to sneak inside, thanks to Edmund's charismatic distractions and a little salt water to the face. They avoided the heavily populated barracks, turning instead to the unguarded war room and bedroom of Zardarok himself. A table with a miniaturized dragon and map of ten towns seemed to foreshadow the warlord's plans, as a tiny dragon followed a path through each town. In the bedroom, the party struggled to open a locked chest, finally helping themselves to the expensive stash, only to trigger a nasty poisonous cloud. Heading east, the marshals found the bedrooms of the princes, Nildar and Durth. Nildar's held a journal depicting his devotion to harvesting myconid spores and creating spore servant zombies, while Dirth's held another treasure chest. This chest, however, has teeth. Oh yeah! Waka, waka, waka. And so do I. Indeed. But you find yourself affixed to a chest that is not a chest, but is a mimic that merely looks like a chest. I believe we ended the last session with both of us smiling at each other. <laughs> sure, you could say that. You call that a smile? Mm hmm. Um, and you are currently adhered to. So you reached out, tried to open this chest. Your hand just stuck to it, and instead the chest kind of molded into this nice, toothy mouth. Uh, and it will. 
I'm going to go ahead and do it surprise round now, which is just going to be a advantage attack with its maw. Well, let me ask you this. Does Danger Sense technically prevent the surprise round? What does Danger Sense say? <laughs> Uh, this is a general idea. Just general <laughs> and I quote, technically prevents. <laughs> <laughs> I have advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects that I can see. Uh, it's just a dexterity saving throws. Never mind. There's your answer. This, this is a trap, so. Uh, I had the word trap in it. It's, yeah. It's a trap. Be it's, honest with it's yourself. A, it's, a a, it's a monster trap. Best kind. It's a trap. It's a trap. Uh, that was excellently whispered to myself, but I rolled a 23. That will probably do it. I wonder if, let's see if that'll roll the attack. Like I that. also don't believe you rolled a 23. Uh, it's on the tape. I cannot lie. <laughs> uh, that, okay, I changed that one. That is eight piercing and seven acid damage. As those okay. teeth are dripping with acid. And now we're all going to roll some initiative. Initiative. Oh God, I mean, I've they technically don't know I'm in trouble yet. When, uh, yeah. Yeah, hard to say. This is always weird whenever somebody gets in turn-based combat mode, uh, separated from the rest of the party. There's one room over. It's. Mm -hmm. You have 18 hit points. I have 18 hit points. Hmm. How did you roll a crit on initiative at a 12? <laughs> That's weird. All right, my... That's a good question. Restart my... 20 my plus 9 plus pi. <laughs> Don't uh -oh. say that. My scripts are... What? Okay, let's start. Why did it pull a 12? Yet it's 12. It is 12. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't understand that at all. Are you in the Matrix? <laughs> That's right. All right, I fixed it. Hooray. But, make... Oh, I've got disadvantage on my initiative roll. The Why nine? does it show? The nine is what I actually, like I rolled a 20 and I rolled a nine. That's what it's showing. Oh. Uh... And it took the nine. Yeah. Well, the good news is but, I. But it showed the green for some reason. I don't know why. I absolutely shit the bed on initiative for the mimic. Oh. Yeah, you did. Why do you have disadvantage? Uh, because Valravin, I guess... Is we already know what your secret gone. is. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I guess the secret's long since gone. Because Val Valravin, uh, as a spy, watches the battlefield before he acts. That's why. Do so you always have disadvantage? I've always had disadvantage. Wow, we've made it to session oh! 29 before anybody realized <laughs> that he has he a disadvantage on this. A critical success. Yeah, this exactly. entire campaign, he's at disadvantage on initiative because that's been part of his his uh, secret. Uh, yeah, man. Wow. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's honestly it's kind of worked out. Robin is better at like waiting and like aiding when you know when it gets to his turn. Anyway, mm -hmm. is that what you do, aid? <laughs> Ostensibly, yes. It's one of the things I do. <laughs> that part was also a secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's what the kids call it nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so what you all heard, so you might not have heard the initial thing, but you definitely heard this um, the sound of this creature just clamping onto Frey and biting and ripping and tearing. So you all been alerted to some kind of danger coming from the room that she entered. And we'll start with them. Are alive with the sound of the creature ripping and tearing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't even know where they went to. <laughs> Dun, there they are. All right. I will. Assume the mimic is not with us. <laughs> you friend or foe? <laughs> Give me three rounds. Yeah, you see, Frey is still has one hand still attached to this thing. It's like like sunken in to this creature, and then its teeth has just been like chomping on her. 
Ooh. Maybe she let maybe she's into that. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. consensual for it. I'll bide. Um I mean she does have a thing with taking fingers. I mean it's a fair assessment. Yeah. yeah. Uh I will do a bonus spell action. Cast Do uh, a bonus <laughs> spell action. Uh magic weapon. Mm. Enchant my bow with plus one. I thought you were about to enchant the freaking bad guy. <laughs> no, I'm not going to attack him. He's my friend. If he has some good points on taxes. Your um, insects swirl around the bow mm. with magic. Yeah, and then I'll attack the... Uh, <laughs> I suppose I'll attack the mimic. Yeah. Or... 22? Yeah, you think that'll hit the uh, okay. the mimic pretty well? Alright, I'm so it's gonna be um, 8 damage and instead of the extra 2 uh, I want to move it to see what happens. Okay. Uh, he has to roll a strength saving throw or be moved uh, 15 feet Am I about to get yeeted with a chest? <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out in a second. Uh, we will not find out. That mimic fucking oh, plants. Boy. Little legs sprout out. And they're not cute legs. They're like nasty, like insectile, like pincer legs. It's like, kong, 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 kong. Just like, it's clamping. become even worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Spider Man with those spider legs just coming out the back. Now that's an insect it's, I want on my it's team. <laughs> Oh no, wait, I get an extra attack. Crap. It's too late. It's too late. Okay. It's not, it's not too late. <laughs> I uh, uh, forgot I was a sorcerer for a second there. So, so it was just the seven damage? Uh, eight damage. Eight damage, right. Because of my magic weapon. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll attack again on Raymond's turn. Attack for 11 damage. All right, arrows are piercing into its nice, f weirdly fleshy body. It still looks like a chest, but it's like rippling as you sink those in, and it's making kind of a, a creaning sound. And now it's my turn. Over. It's over. It's, <laughs> it's Raymond's turn. <laughs> Stop looking at me. Uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Unfortunately, I can't get... That much closer, but he says, "Allow me to try to mend the the arm, as your teeth has teeth sunken into it." So he does a little alchemy magic, and, and it's kind of far, but maybe some threads will come out. And I try to reinforce her arm a little bit. Wow, that was bad. <laughs> Four healing A points. bare minimum healing word. Mm -hmm. Still better than nothing. Well, was that, that's for, was that for me? That's for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. So that's a bonus action. And I can't remember what we decided. If I do a spell, can I cast a cantrip too? Yep. Okay. Uh, well, if that's the case, I will just thorn right from a distance. <laughs> it's unsuccessfully. Yeah, you don't think it'd be too hard to hit this creature, but 11 is not going to be good enough. I try to go like in between Ray's legs, but of mm -hmm. course... It, it gets tricky. You're not sure where she ends and it begins. Robin. Alright, I'll take a couple steps in to see what's going on. It's funny, even though you have disadvantage, you're still not the last one. Uh, that is funny, yes. Everybody, yeah. Wow. Um, does it look like... Can I tell visually if this thing can hear me or not? Maybe I yell at it to see if it reacts. <laughs> As I look at it and try to see if I can visually gauge whether or not this thing is capable of hearing well, my Well, let's, let's do the, uh, the identify creature thing. Yeah. Does it respond to my secret call? I... <laughs> Made with it earlier. <laughs> My mating call. 
It worked with, it worked with the mimic. It's coming so. this way with a look in its eyes. Uh, give me a nature check. Okay. Do your worst, beast. That's right. You have no idea what the fuck is going on in here. For all you know, this is just a trap that Frey stumbled into. This is just how this is how chess work in this place. These <laughs> <laughs> are uh, certainly fond of some odd architecture. Um. Well, not knowing whether or not it's gonna work or not, um, Valravan uh, will speak a few words um, about. Um, Frey condensing her might and forcefully pulling her hand away from the creature successfully. And then Valravan will just take a pot shot at it with a crossbow. <laughs> wow. Oh, 21 the, the hits. Best crossbow shot. That is more than a pot shot. <laughs> 10 damage? Jesus. Yeah. So that was Bardic Inspiration Frey, in case I wasn't Thank clear. <laughs> okay. Just casually does as much damage as the ranger over there. Uh, yeah. Hey. Uh, at least for one attack. Yeah. That's my one thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill you! <laughs> you have my spot on the team. Wait, so so Frey, it's Frey, Frey in the things, like, Jaws? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, she's she's just, still attached to it. Just making sure. Not in a friendly way. According to who? Hmm. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Mm hmm But it is like it's like I just wanted to visually understand. It's like jaws, like like a, around her or something, or around a limb of hers. Uh. It because just... from the from the picture, <laughs> that's what I'm picturing. <laughs> she so when she went to. Basically, yes. It, it's she went to open the chest. Her hand like mm -hmm. sunk into it, and then it was still able to bite at her, but it had to still make an attack roll to do that. So okay. she is she has the grappled condition. Okay, because what I am going to do is I'm going to send my Spiri three thousand deluxe in to just like run in there as the the mop with the legs. To just get in there and like, what I want to do is put the mop in the like the chest to pry open. Excuse me, what are you interrupting me? What are you mansplaining to me right now? <laughs> is this going to be consensual? Ace, I want to get in there and pry open the jaws of the chest to let Frey loose. Okay. <laughs> that, that's my my what. That's why I'm trying to make sure I understand what is is physically happening. Because if it has like if it's like a chest like on her, right? Then we just like go in and just pry open. Sure. Um, I I would allow that. I'm trying to figure out what the strength score of this fucking mop is. <laughs> Look. I don't know the answer to that, but I know <laughs> that the mops like thing says that it it can cleanse, it can violently cleanse the dirtiest enemy. So I assume <laughs> that it has some type of strength, something. And, and I I have one free hand, so I'm aiding the hell out of this thing. Uh, <laughs> I see a mop suppose, come up and go face first into this yeah. thing. Yeah. I'm gonna help use that thing like a fulcrum. Okay, so so you're command, so you're <laughs> you're sending out the little sentient mop thing and commanding yeah. it to free Frey from this creature. Which yeah, it's just physics. It's okay. I feel I feel like honestly, if anything, we should have advantage on this check because it's just physics. Well, just well, physics. well. It's simple physics. If it was a Spiri four thousand, I would grant that. No, Spiri four thousand comes with the extra crowbar facility. <laughs> Otherwise, you got to get the attachment. It's sold yeah, separately. It's like, it's like a built-in vice where you can, it just pries things open. Doesn't come included. It's also got a can opener. It's 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 a cigar cutter. It's really quite handy. Does it make Every, Julian fries? Everything, yeah, the modern custodian needs. 
but no bottle opener still. They just can't get that no, technology. That's, that's another that's another purchase. <laughs> um, okay, so let's uh hmm. It's got an escape DC of 13. Let's say the mop has a strength of just average baseline 10, which means it's as strong as the average person. Um, I, I was just looking at animate objects as. as yeah, did, did they? Oh, they have stats for that? That would be a great they one to do. look at. Me, a medium animated object has a strength of 10. Boom. Okay. Excellent. I'm backed up. I'm, I'm aiding. All I, right. I and aiding. you're aiding it. Yeah. So we will give it advantage. It's got a strength of 10, so roll just a, I guess we'll just do a straight 1d20 with advantage, and you need a 13 or higher to uh, Bring in my hand. make this work. Okay, that's one roll. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this little okay. this little mob is trying its damnedest. Hold on, I really want this to work, so I'm gonna we use all my do. inspiration. Okay. <laughs> Come on, mop! The light from the heavens Seven shines. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> right? uh, you needed a thirteen. Was the number? Oh, a thirteen. Thirteen. Gosh. You had three tries there. This is, Getting closer. This is it's trying nuts. its damnedest, but it's just kind of sinking into the the fleshy part of the. Why are you still rolling? <laughs> because of advantage. Does, do I not get another advantage? Not on inspiration. Let's gives you the one more roll. But man, okay. what would have been had you had a fourth roll? Nope, nope. <laughs> Good try, Spiri. And our bard ate us anymore. Well, I should have I inspired the mop. If only you had out. inspired the mop. Yep. Uh, we work would've... on our communication. Yeah, exactly. Now I will say, That's if what we're all screaming at you, if Frey wants to spend her action doing the same thing, then I would give her advantage because her and the mop are still kind of working together. And Frey, you would be able to use your actual strength score. Oh n no, Frey's putting one hand behind her back and pulling her axe out. Or you could do that. I'm I'm just gonna swing right for its teeth. Swing for the teeth. Oh, look at that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> you chose poorly. The mob is I get to attack twice. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You grit, you grit and set yourself Celeste straight. Celeste is getting a mop back with a couple fewer bristles. Damn it, Celeste. How dare you help me in here. Uh, 21 does hit. For eight. Eight more damage. You guys are chopping away at this thing, but it is a uh, large chest. It's still a fleshy mound. It is still a fleshy mound with many, many teeth. That's all I got. All right. Uh, it will just try to attack you again, which you are still attached, so it still has advantage. Yeah, how about you actually roll it where we can see it and we don't have to Hopefully it'll work. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Boom. Yeah. 18. Dang. Yeah, that does it. Another 14, six piercing and eight acid damage. Okay. So acid teeth Yikes. are no good. Yeah, luckily for you all, I am biting into the fucking barbarian who has a million hit points. Thimbleweed! That is, that is lucky for Thimbleweed. <laughs> <laughs> Thimbleweed couldn't take very many of these would already be dead. acid teeth yeah. bites. Uh, Thimbleweed will a short bow. Or 27. Or, oh, yeah, the 27 will hit. Plus uh, 17 damage. My goodness. Oh, can we... Just let him tell you what the damage The mimic looks to be sagging horribly now. It's a, it is a, just a pin cushion with all these arrows sticking out of it. It's a saggy mount. Mm hmm. Again. For. Nine damage. And we did straight pissed that, that Balrobin dared, like, try to <laughs> show you up. A... I'll show you. All right, that second shot um, finally puts one right in the creature's eye, and he goes, Aah! and it just kind of, its, it's body was keeping together, just kind of melts into this gray blobbish form. Rip open the mimic and suck on its fleshy treasure inside. Good God. Is that... <laughs> 
Do you eat mimics like oysters? Is that, is that what you're describing? <laughs> is that how mimics work, Val Robin? <laughs> With his seven nature check, he definitely yeah. knows. <laughs> Certainly looks edible treasure to me. Chest? Yes. Medical right. treasure chest sounds logical to me. Yeah, and it looks yeah, like right. there was no actual treasure here whatsoever. It's just literally a creature. Curses, I was lied to. Uh, all right. Is there anything in this room? Nothing else of note. Friendship. Friendship. <laughs> <laughs> That's just buried at the center of the neck. <laughs> eh, just toss it aside. Yeah. The toy horse I played with as a child. What's it doing here? What's in the upper left of the room? A anything? bed. Ugh. The mimic's bed? Wow. It could be. It could be a mimic. Is the bed also a mimic? I'll lay down on the bed and find out. Oh, that'd be so creepy. If there actually was a bed mimic. Note to self. Put bed mimic somewhere. Bed mimic. Wait, doesn't it like to the middle of the night? Mm -hmm. It's not like a mimic. regular mimic, just one that goes, ooh, yeah, I like it. <laughs> just a really uncomfortable, awkward mimic. Yeah, Useful, yeah uncomfortable all night long. <laughs> Uh, can I can I suggest we short rest before we go any further? How many hit points do you have left, or how many hit dice do you have left? I have eighteen. I've got one hit die left. You have eight. <laughs> I have eighteen hit points. I have one hit die. I have three hit dice. I, I just I have a potion of healing you can have. I got, I got some potions of healing. I I could I could use some of my own too. I mean, we all like, have those. <laughs> <laughs> we got those every session. <laughs> I'd like to use a 17. couple hit die and get back up to a little bit higher if we could. I, but... I have no hit die left. That's concerning. <laughs> <laughs> this bedroom looks like there has seen no traffic in it for a very long time. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just... I'm only saying this because I, oh I think... Oh, that's such a good joke. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just, just like Reese's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, was, what was the joke? I missed the first <laughs> part of that. <laughs> this bedroom looks like I've seen no traffic in a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. That's and pretty good. Just funnier because you're married. <laughs> a barren wasteland. I have no choice. Anyway, continue. Um, how much is the healing potion? 2d4 two, two plus 2. 2? Yeah. All right. Three. I'm going to use one for short rest. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not going to yeah, do it, I'm... but you guys can go in, shut the doors, and hang out here for an hour or whatever it takes. Okay. Whatever it takes. That's whatever it takes. Because I think, I think, based on what I remember from last session, our only choices now are to like hop in this elevator and go up or down. And I suspect there's danger wherever we go. That is true. You guys have covered this whole level. I will remind you all... Um, that you have seen two elevators, and there is technically a giant shaft in the middle, a chimney chute that seems to run the entire gamut of the building. But yes, in the southern room, you did see an elevator in kind of what looked like a training room facility. And it's just automated, and it goes just up and down, up and down. Right now feels much better. All right, yeah, Edmund, your disguise self would wear off. Are you recasting it? I just did. Okay. I'm also you going to attempt. So your song of rest works for any healing, not just hit dice. Let's read it. <laughs> it specifically says regain hit points into the, the short rest. If you can hear your story, reg regain hit points at the end of the short rest. Yeah, so if you regain hit points... Oh, that wasn't a sarcastic let's read it. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, it wasn't. I was actually like, I, I don't know. So yes, you, you would get it. By spending one or more hit dice. Oh, by Wait, spending... We finished yeah, yeah, reading yeah, it! <laughs> I stopped, I stopped it. it! How convenient that you stopped! <laughs> I already checked. My point was made. That's when he stopped reading. We 
we call that confirmation. Your Honor, I, I have an objection. He did not finish the statement. <laughs> Your Honor, I'm innocent. I stopped reading when I wanted to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> objection, because it's devastating to my case. <laughs> Actually, lawyers do cherry pick passages that they have defendants read in court. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to my to my uh, defense, this was a whole separate line. Like it end that line ends with. <laughs> I can't be expected honor, to read five lines. Defense, Next line. The expert agreed with me for a hot second. <laughs> my expert witness. Until he too continued reading the sentence. He uh, folded under pressure. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, sorry. I, <laughs> I tried. He did. Best friends forever. <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, this this bedroom got a little more traffic. <laughs> uh, nobody comes to disturb you all during this time. Okay. Do we hear, do we happen to hear, like, traffic outside the door as we're... Uh, here? no. It's only been about an hour, so no. Okay. Still seems pretty quiet. Everything is business as usual. All right. Um... <clears throat> so we got, in terms of, like, ways to go, you said we got, there's two elevators. One of them is back in that room with the, uh, with the guard, though, right? Like, yep. There's, there's a, straight up a guard in that room. Yep. Then there's the just, just hole, and then to directly to our south is an is an actual elevator. Yes, which seems like the safest way forward. Yep, uh, Brazier. If you're entering this room, Braziers of glowing hot coal stands in the corners of this room, working to offset the cold air that flows through the arrow slits on the south wall. Scattered around the room are several trading dummies made of wood and sackcloth, as well as four freestanding suits of plate armor. Lord of Ceiling Iron Cage in the middle of the room contains an elevator shaft with chains running up and down away from it. Chains are in constant motion and you hear loud mechanical noises from above and below. Anybody need plate armor? Always that smoke everywhere. Mm. I'm not wearing any armor. We're not a very armored party, I don't think. Mm -mm. I'll use and... plate armor. Say again? I'll use some plate armor. Just put it on. Just why not? Collapse under its weight. <laughs> <laughs> <Can't move. laughs> so this elevator scary. that we're looking at, does it go both up and down? Is it like a two two cart system or how 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 does this just work? Just a single elevator, and it is just um, basically rotating between. As you look and follow, you can easily because it's about a minute where you see it. It goes up, a minute goes by, and you see it. The elevator coming down. It stops for a minute, and then it goes down, and then a minute goes oh, okay. by, and you see the elevator come up. So it's just constantly it's a ski lift. Yeah, and it's going at a, a pretty good clip when it when it does go. Well, my friends, are we going up or down? <sighs> I have no idea what awaits us upwards, but from the conversations we have heard, I assume a mechanical dragon awaits us downward. <laughs> we go upwards then. <laughs> That seems just, the safest. Just first initial, initial just, thought. Just to check just, it out. Yes, of course. All right. Yeah, I'm down with that. Let's go up first. <laughs> Save the mechanical dragon for later. Uh, you do note that you would only really be able to fit four people. And in fact, it would even be uncomfortable because it's obviously designed for uh, wars. Hmm. Well, I mean, two of us well, would fit just fine. Perhaps our dwarven, our resident dwarven prince, ought to go up first, <clears throat> just by himself. Uh, you're muted, Ray. Go up the elevator. Yeah, just in case there's you know a bunch of dwarven there with 
crossbows or something. Hmm. And then we can follow up, and the four of us can follow along if it's safe. Sure. I might not come back down, but <laughs> he steps into the elevator. <laughs> I will go scoop it out first. Yeah, do you guys have any communication system or plans or anything beyond just... Um, he, Never do. He, he can come no. back down, right? <laughs> if I can, let's see. I have to Hello, my people. Him. Goodbye, my people. I will go uh, yeah, I, I have to be able to see him to message with him, so that's not going to work. No, he can just come back down and tell us it's safe. I think. Yes. Okay. I'll be down as soon as it's safe. <clears throat> uh, okay. Edmund, you uh, and you're going up, correct? Oh, I go up or down? You can go up or down, yeah. It, you don't actually choose where you want to go. You just have to time it because the elevator is moving on its own. It's just going up and then going down and then going up and then going down. So you just have to time it to go in whenever it's Whatever direction you want to go in. Yeah, up's fine. Okay. Um, so you hop in there, still magically disguised as Darth Sunblight, or having redawned your disguise after the rest. And like I said, it goes up a pretty good clip, and you feel ascending pretty high. You know, the ceiling is only whatever it was, ten or twenty feet. So soon you're just in your own little tight, dark, you know, chimney shaft thing going up. Um, and then you can, you know, eventually you get higher and you start feeling um, cooler, uh, cooler air. You can tell you're reaching a spot that is, has some, you know, air coming in from the outside. And then it reaches the top. And it puts you over here. Uh, sending the elevator shaft deposits you in the middle of a large room with machinery filling the western half. A Dwerger stands in the uh, to the west of you, next to a lever that juts out of the west wall. Braziers heaped with hot coals do little to offset the cold air blowing into the room through arrow slits in the south wall. A Dwerger looks like he's kind of just inspecting and generally just working on the machinery over here, which is, as you note, not attached or the same machinery as the elevator Um that you just rode up on. And you also see a uh, passageway that leads north. And can I tell us the top of the ride? You can tell this is the top of the ride, yes. This is the very top. Okay, well, I guess step off and look at that guy super like a supervisor and continue on. Yeah, he hasn't um, even note, um, really noticed you yet, and you're just kind of... Um, so you could, or you could ignore him. It looks like you're ignoring him. So you head north, and you... Sh oh, you know what? I need to re-update your dark vision, don't I? Or do you have to re... How long does your dark vision last? Do you have to recast that? It was eight hours. Eight hours? Okay. I think I yeah, copied eight your, hours. Okay, I need to redo your dark vision. Then give me one second. All right, dark vision is reapplied. Um, and it looks like a long ass hallway that stretches to the west. And upon exiting, you turn south and you see an identical looking elevator in this southern room next to a similar machinery. Um, and a similar Dwergar just kind of inspecting and working on this um, giant machinery that seems to be attached. The other one was attached to. Somewhere in the wall that you couldn't quite tell. And this one is the same thing, but just on the other side. It seems to be attached to some grand mechanical thing um, through the wall on the other side. However, this area also has a uh, number of doors to the west and a Dwerger who's like standing just outside of uh, this door. And this Dwerger, as soon as you start walking in, turns to you and um, practically just drops whatever little doohickey he's got holding. This Prince Darth, that's you. I do I not look like Prince Darth? Sorry, I didn't know you had returned to us. Did you ask the people at the front? No, we are hard at work, as you know. Our father keeps us very busy. Give me the update. 
What is behind that door now? Which door do you reference? The one he's right here? The one he's standing in front of. Yeah. Oh, the workshop. We continue to build the suits of armor for the hammerers. How is it going along? Very well. We are creating more every day. The engines of pain that are well fueled by their own pain. But they are powerful. They will. They can assist us in the forge as well as on the battlefield. Remember, our men's lives are dependent on the integrity of this armor. <laughs> so you better make it strong. Yes, of course. In fact, we are working on many new prototypes as well. And uh, he, he specifically mentions um, limbs such as a prototype arm. Let me see. So, of course. And the rest of you just hanging down there still. <laughs> how, much time is, how much time has passed at this point? Uh, it's probably been 10, 15 minutes. Oh boy, we're probably getting nervous. Well, maybe not even that light. It's probably been, it's probably been 10 minutes. Okay. Ray's practicing on one of the dummies. Oh, yeah. Axe in the dummy. Mm-hmm. One's already broken. She's working on the next one. <laughs> yeah, while Robin's just waiting by the elevator, he's get, he's probably getting nervous at this point. Like he's he's been going uh, full ten minutes now. I'm sure he's fine. Yes, <laughs> there's no problem up there. Have you heard him scream? I have not. Don't know how fine. far that goes though. Um, so he lets you inside, Prince Dirth, and you see the workshop, uh, heated and illuminated by braziers of glowing hot coals in the corner. The room is furnished with stone tables and cabinets. In the middle of the room, surrounded by twisted bits of metal, is a half-finished exoskeletal construct. And you can recognize, because you fought, um, these before, or you fought, I guess, one of them, which was a Dwerger that, that was in a suit of armor, that had like clamps and shit whenever you fought the Dwerger in East Haven. And you can see that they are basically manufacturing um, more of those here. And you see just a lot of, you know, doohickeys and gadgets and things around. And there's one kind of in a nice um, display that looks like a very powerful um, arm that looks like it's got all these different intricate wires and gears to it. It looks capable of um, actually transforming. Mega Man arm? <laughs> I'm guessing you're, you're describing it as something I would want, right? That's what I'm trying to do, yes. <laughs> you're How immediately close. envious of the arm. <laughs> you see a holy light. <laughs> <laughs> How close is this one to be tested? Or we think it's ready for action. Just uh, need to find volunteer and he makes a chopping motion. <laughs> <laughs> Must be attached to proper severed limb. Allow me. I will find someone to volunteer. Excellent. Thank you, Prince Darthur. Glad you show so much interest in our work. Like I told this one outside, our men's lives depend on this, and I want to make sure that what you are creating is good for our men. Very well. I think you will be quite pleased with this. But don't worry. I will find someone without an arm. He nods. They all look, <laughs> they look like just, um, like a, a, a corner of the business office that the boss like never goes and visits and they're just, um, kind of happy to get the attention. <laughs> the dude's name from the Batman movies, uh, Morgan Freeman's character, uh, Lucius Fox, Lucius Fox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <his basement. laughs> yeah. 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 So that let me take it. They do. All right. 
be on the lookout for who this fortunate soul is with this arm. And I will keep you updated on progress as he walks away. Nice. Um, I'm not going to take this elevator. Let's okay. go back to the party. Sure. Yeah, and, and as you walk down, um, this dwarger finally does see you and says, Prince Dirt! You've Is he? returned! Yes, yes, that's what I weren't saying. And he just steps onto the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Later, sucker! Yeah. All right, yeah, you just fuck off, guy. I'm going down. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you, uh, you know, you might have to wait like a minute or two for the elevator to come up, and then you can step on and then ride it down. And uh, this arm, you guys, miss me. Would probably require you to identify it or a short rest. Ironically, you just guys had a short rest, so timing's not great. Oh, but great. Yeah. it definitely yeah. looks like it is magical and powerful. Well, ma a magic item, I guess. <laughs> That's fine. We'll figure it out later. You can add a prototype mechanical arm to your inventory. Um, is it safe up there? Is it? What is? What did you find? Uh, it's more like the research department. They're just working on some um, machinery and keeping this place running. I found this arm that uh, I'm willing, uh, dying to try out, but other than that, there's not much up there. Oh, yeah. I'm a robin will glance at uh, Celeste at this point. Uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, I suppose the mechanical dragon awaits then. Wonderful. <laughs> I did. I do not agree to this. That sounds far too dangerous at this point. I will uh, stay. Uh, you're gonna stay here. I will stay here. <laughs> how how far? Uh, when Edmund went up, how like how many feet do we think up this this elevator went? Um. Since Edmund already wrote it up or down, and you guys can do the timing and everything, I'll go ahead and let you deduce that it is 100 feet. Okay. So, yes. I, so uh, somebody in the chat kindly let me know that message is not, in fact, bound by line of sight. Hmm. So uh, if I'm in the shaft, then it has a range of 120 feet. So if I'm in the shaft... In the I shaft. Could... <laughs> That's right. Uh, I can just uh, point up and message someone that would be on a different floor conceivably okay uh so yeah so uh, yes celeste uh perhaps then stand guard here i will message you should your janitorial services be needed wait i'm i'm standing guard here alone with no one else here to be with me well you didn't want to go fight the mechanical dragon yes Oh, oh, okay. I. Or, or perhaps you're safer with us. I, 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 I think, I think I will, I will go with you. Um, you know, just in case you need, you need some strong person to support you. It is very gracious of you, dear. And I don't know if you can smell what is coming from below, but I suspect there might be some cleaning to be done down there. Oh, it does. It smells. It smells like it could use a good dose of bleach down there. Let's yes. go. All right, I got less motivated. Let's go. Get, get <laughs> All right, who is? Um, did you get a ride first, or? You're just oh yeah, maybe yeah. I forgot about it. <laughs> maybe have Edmund go down first just to do a, a preliminary, like make sure there aren't guards or anything right right there. Yeah, I'll do that. Ride an elevator down. Okay. Just tell him, copy and paste. So you've got. All right. So you ride the elevator down, and same thing. It goes about a hundred feet. 
before you reach a bottom. The elevator shaft terminates in this room. A large stone wheel next to the iron cage turn con turns constantly. West of the wheel, you see a Dwerger encased in one of those exoskeletal suits of armor, and his face is just a mask of pain. It's it's very off-putting, and he turns towards you and says, God, Mitch, what's happened to you? You recognize um, what oh, he's wearing, that one of those exact suits they were building in that workshop. How do you feel in that suit? Sounds like a cook success. <laughs> uh, you note a door to the north and a door to the east in this room as well. Um, it yeah, looks like this. There. Sorry, it looks like this door is just kind of generally like patrolling or watching this room, but obviously it doesn't isn't hostile against you when you come down and off the elevator. I'm I'm still up in the top with other guys. Oh, there's two of me. Never mind. Sorry, yeah, I'm just copying and pasting your token around, but I can hide you on this one. Oh, there you go. Now you're only down. Oh, so it's just the one room? So you are down here now. Right. But that's it? There's no doors or anything? Uh, there are doors, yes. There's a door to the north here and a door to the east here. Um, does this guy look like he, like, is, is with it, or? Is he with it? <laughs> is he, like, you know, cool and hip? Is he copacetic, man? Um, he looks like he can't converse very well, but he looks like he still understands you. I'm a spy. <laughs> what, do you, what do you say? I'm a spy? I'm not really Prince Darth. He kind of stares at you. <laughs> All right. Um, did um, Valravan do his little messagey thing? Dan, if you're if you're standing close to the thing, I I, I can be down uh, at the top of the shaft. Okay. Um, says, Come on down. It's safe down here. All right, uh, he'll turn to the other part of the other members. Uh, I suppose it is our cue to ride the elevator. Okay, you see the elevator um, come up. And you four can clamber inside. Head down. That and put you down here. Same thing. You guys arrive down in this um, otherwise dark room, and as soon as this uh, the cage lowers and opens the door, and you all begin stepping off the elevator, um, this hammer um, immediately turns as. Intruders attacking and seems to go into complete hostile mode. And I'm gonna need everybody to roll initiative. Um everything's black for me. Oh, never mind, there it is. Edmund, I thought you said it was safe, my boy. Well he didn't seem to respond when I It was him. safe to him. <laughs> uh, and stand guard upstairs. Let's stay in the elevator. <laughs> I suppose I misread the situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no surprise, no surprise rounds or anything, uh, and we start with Mr. Ulrich. Um, these so are did not... you, you didn't roll initiative, or are you actually staying in the elevator, right? <laughs> No, I rolled initiative. Oh. Did I, I? Maybe I didn't click my token or oh, something. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't see it. Yeah. I rolled a four. Oh, I didn't click my token. I rolled a four. You did roll a four. Okay, yeah. I can edit it if you it's click it again. Not the best. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. I just closed roll 20. <laughs> it's it's so a let's just you got like dust. five turns. It's a Thanos dust. <laughs> just dissipates. I'm, She's done. I'm on a laptop. It's 
But yeah, you are last, of, so there's it a lot should of be, windows happening. You should be pretty Celeste, safe. Celeste just turns to us wide eyed. I'm sorry. I don't <laughs> want to go. I don't want to go. <laughs> Roll twenty is loading. It's only her her portion of the of of the elevator just goes right back up. That's, yeah, exactly. Just. Mr. Ulrich, you are first. <laughs> These are not the intruders you're seeking. He says that to the guy. Um, your speech seems to fall on deaf ears at this point. He seems to be in full-on hostile danger mode. You think this might be a uh, an unfortunate side effect of the fact that he doesn't converse very well? Is he's also not easily duped very well? I see. I see. All right. Well, I'd like to grapple him. Not mine. Shoot. Can I grapple him? Uh, of course. Give me the grapple roll. Was it athletics? Uh, yes. Okay. Hang on. I'm trying to edit Celeste's number and it's freaking out on me. There it goes. Wow, that's a hell of a grapple. Um, yeah. this is... I think he gets either strength or athletics, so we'll try strength. My goodness, all right, you grab a hold of him. Suit, uh, exoskeletal suit and all. Shove his face into that gear. Jesus Christ. <laughs> How dare you, don't you don't obey me. <laughs> Edmund's fixing an alignment change. I am your <laughs> Good what's, God, what's man. That? movie or book where they say like bite the curve like clockwork orange oh you're well the thing that when you say that my mind goes to american history x oh look i've never what, seen any of those which like, what she say things i uh, said clockwork orange no she said, she said you, you said a movie where they bite the curb bite the curb is what that's, I. that's american I history x actually, that is yeah, american I've history x he goes to jail movies, for doing that yeah but that's <laughs> That's what he just made me think of. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Bite the gear. <laughs> Good God. This is getting dark. <laughs> this is, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can grapple him and you basically use your movement to put him in the gear, uh, which I will absolutely allow that. It would probably take a full round for it to, like, turn over to where it starts doing damage to him. You can wait three seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess he's like here right now. Okay, that's that's extremely dark. <laughs> Thimbleweed, do you see the did you Prince... Tim, did you see the gear being used as an environmental hazard? You you come down no you come down and basically see one Dwerger has grappled and shoved another Dwerger who's in an exoskeletal suit into the gear like a mechanism, and you note that if that situation remains, is a good chance that. First of all, it's a good chance you don't know what kind of damage the Dwerger will take, but you also surmise that the gear of this elevator might take some serious fucking damage as well. Like we're looking for a I'm excited. <laughs> so, the... Where's the gear? It is right next to all of you guys. It is the major gear that seems to be operating this elevator. Oh. Okay. Uh. <laughs> I try to extricate him from the gear. Of course. <laughs> I'd like to do that. Um, that might require that might require yeah a dueling uh, athletics check with uh with uh, the the really wants to grind dearth <laughs> Athletics. Yes. Okay. I'm trying to out grapple him, basically. Oof. I'm literally gonna make it a dueling one. Yeah, and Edmund, you can roll. What are you doing, Thimbleweed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use my inspiration. For this. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> 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 but the elevator. <laughs> what a what a horrific use of inspiration. <laughs> Don't make me 
stop! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh my uh, god! You guys, he is sounding an alarm. We must get rid of him. But won't he jam <laughs> slash destroy the elevator? One problem at a time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll. All right. I'm out. <laughs> well, Robin, <laughs> what would you like to do? You know. Uh, well, Robin actually will look at the situation and he'll. This, this is a, uh, maybe a dark thought on his part, but he realizes there's a lot of really solid dramatic tension in this moment. <laughs> yeah. And, and he, he, he's kind of liking the character arc that Edmund's on right now. So he's going to start writing a passage. He's just staring at Edmund, scribbling quickly. <laughs> the, You're an the dark fire in his eyes as he holds the, the dwarker's head in the gear. What dark, burning thoughts pass through his mind. And as he writes those uh, words, he's going to give Edmund a point of <laughs> the, the faction lions have started to appear in the party. He is Team Edmund all the way. Right. <laughs> Fuck our own uh, safety. However, Whatever makes the best dramatic tension. Exactly. Celeste, success. Celeste has lost trust in Valravin at this point. <laughs> I mean, technically you all have Celeste lost. Will remember that. I think we've all lost trust <laughs> in Valravin for many sessions. Uh, he will, he will not, however, actively attack the, 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 the dwarf being held Plausible down. deniability. Yeah, he's supposed to watch this <laughs> unfold. <laughs> I just like to watch, guys. Uh, so that'll be... You still have an action, I think, right? Yeah, but I don't want to attack him. I don't, I don't want to, like, join, like, it seems, gr it, 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 to, to Valraman's mind, it feels gross to attack this dwarf that's held down when he can just let Edmund do his dark deed. <laughs> and he just that... deport it. <laughs> Peripherally. <Yeah>. Exactly. <clears throat> From a distance. So, yeah. Okay. I'm feeling good. <laughs> Frey, <laughs> I'm fascinated to see how this unfolds in the party. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My thoughts as well. I mean, <laughs> usually it's turn. me who's doing something like this and yeah, not this Edmund. Is, this is new, yes. <laughs> this is terrifying or excite you to see it from outside. <laughs> I mean, she's not opposed to it. But <laughs> so this guy's in like that hulky machinery thing that we saw before, right? Yeah. He it has the little spike that's going into his head type of a thing. I should share that picture again. Yes, you should. Good idea. Yeah, this it looks like this. Yeah. It's got a hole, like, literally just encased in this suit with, yeah, like, this spike right there to where it's almost, like, attached to his brain. And he has, like, a giant hammer for one of his mecha suit armors and then a pincher claws in the other. So we know if we basically just take him out of there, he's basically a potato. <laughs> You're not even sure if he can be removed out of there and be alive still. Well... Part of him can come out of there. It didn't say he had to be alive when it came out of there. There you go. So... Not as he once was. We must end his misery. Edmund? Edmund? Look at me. Look at me. I cannot look at you. I am focused <laughs> on holding this man's head in the gear. There's an easier way to do this. You hold on to him, and I just rip him out of the machinery. That way we can still get out later. Be another exit. Are you sure? No. <laughs> then we do this my way. Uh, there are two elevators. So, while well, he's got a hold of this guy. I'm going to make you guys start rolling like persuasion checks against each other pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's nothing to persuade. Frey's going to do it her way. Go, go for it. Almost every time. Uh, yeah, I mean, Edmund's too. holding like, the back of the armor. Like, Yeah. So Evan, Evan's got him, so she's gonna put her hand in and try to bodily rip this thing out of the armor. Yeah. Oh, Robin, it's loving this. He's right. He's right. <laughs> now it, I, I'm trying to do it in an effort to keep the machinery going 
<laughs> if he's out of it, then the this doesn't have to be crushed type of a thing. So, um, yeah. <laughs> looking she at it, kind of wants to do it in a cool way type of a thing though, towards like yeah, a push off of the the gear as she yanks the this guy out, which would make Edmund and the machinery stumble backwards. You're pretty sure it would be an impossible feat to try to rip him out of there, but you do think you could specifically target just, like, his body, and you do feel like that might deal a lot more damage to him versus just a generic, uh, you know, attack against him. Compared to getting his face crushed in a gear. Yes. That's well, I mean, it's not just his face. It's the machinery as well, too, that he's in. Yeah. We need that gear. Mm. Um, Sounds like she's Team Thimbleweed. <laughs> <laughs> like, you say impossible, but what is impossible here? Tell me what impossible is. I mean, impossible means you're not supposed to be able to rip him out of there, basically, but I'm leaning towards uh -huh. making it just a really, really hard DC check. Like what? Uh, God, like a DC 25 or something. Why would, don't be a dick. <laughs> I mean, being a dick That's would say, no, you, you can't do this dick. at all. Because <laughs> you know I can't hit that. That, that is the definition of impossible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of is. <laughs> like we physically cannot hit it. <laughs> and kicking it over, you know that we can't hit. I think you still have uh, Bardic Inspiration, right? Or does it... Uh... Uh, yeah, it's gone. We'll be short-rested after that last. I mean, I'd swing at him, but it's not going to do enough damage to kill him to get Edmund to stop doing this. So that's kind of pointless. Maybe it'll put him out of his misery quicker, and we'll be able to pull the, the lifeless. Well, corpse he goes out of the next. Gears. That's the problem. Mm. If, if y'all had done that as well, too, that would have been great. <laughs> well, I thought it was the season play out. He's not... Robin's trying to maintain neutrality. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So she'll climb on top of the, the machinery dude and just look Edmund in the eye and say, there better be another exit. Because if there is not, I will kill you myself. I will kill you before I let them kill us. Understand? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> okay. And with that, she will climb off. And stand where Edmund is in front of her at all times. Okay. Okay. This is the most fascinating combat round I think I've ever seen in all of our D&D &D games. Everybody just having to like break down and decide what moral thing they're going to do. Yeah, each, each combat round is a moral question. <laughs> it's like a dialogue tree comes up instead of a normal combat round. Are you sure this is the answer you mm. want to choose? Yeah. Mm. Poor Celeste is just having to watch all this happen. Right. Yeah. Think of the mess you get to clean up, Celeste. <laughs> Good point. Actually, <laughs> no, no. I I made my bed. I will slip. I will sit in it. So you're not doing anything on your action or on your turn. Oh. <laughs> I want to kick Edmund's feet out from underneath him. <laughs> Change your mind. You're you're flipping a lot. This, this is a lot around. of flip flopping. So, well, there's that, and she doesn't like the fact that he went yeah 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 when she threatened to kill him. So. Mm. So with that, she'll kick his feet out from underneath him, or at least attempt to. Yeah. <laughs> um. That may be funny to watch this dude land on top of him. Let's see. What would a tripping? Is that a? That's got to be a thing you can do, right? Knock somebody prone. Don't make me look all this. See, grapple. Mm-hmm. You put an impossible freaking DC out there. I'm gonna make you look up every rule I can find. Uh. I don't have one for. Let's just make. You can use the shove rules. They're, they're... Is there what's shove? Uh... I was gonna do disarm, but sho I don't have shoved on here. My shove might be better. 
It's a contested see. athletics. <laughs> I, I think, start yeah. shoving. I just get a shovel <laughs> in the in the roll twenty thing. For some reason I don't have shove in our things. Special melee do. attack to shove a creature either to knock it. Oh, okay. It says here, special melee attack to shove a creature either to knock it prone or push it away from you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Um. How do we do it? It's, uh, yeah, I, I make a strength athletics check contested by the target's strength or dexterity acrobatics check. Oh, okay, basically the same thing as a grapple then, mechanically. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. you can do it. Okay. So I use strength athletics. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to hope for the best here. And I have athletics dexterity. Mm -hmm. Athletics or You're... acrobatics you can roll. Yeah. I, you don't have your inspiration it. anymore. My bardic inspiration. Oh, God! Oh, ah, Robin gave her bardic inspiration! <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, God. This is gold! <laughs> Who's the real villain here? Balron's gonna <laughs> reveal he's been a mastermind this whole time. Finally, the party a, is turning. It's gonna be such a good story. Wow. I said trip Edmund, but he kind of like just does a little hop. There's <laughs> <laughs> under him. There's a knowing look between you and Valravin, I feel like, in that moment. Yeah. There's <laughs> Nicholson look. Like, yeah! <laughs> the camera zooms in. <laughs> All that, right. Bray will take up her position in the back corner. Mm -hmm. Just... All right, Edmund, you remain grapple, uh, uh, grabbing on oh. to... To be fair, yeah. chat is correct. It's an attack action. So you can't uh, use a bardic no, inspiration. No, no, no. For that. He, oh, no, he can't. you can. It's you can attack twice, two. so you could technically try again. That's a good I point. Could. And he already used the bardic inspiration, so he can't use it again. That's yeah. true. Or, yeah, My God. Jesus, a seventeen. Mm. Ray's pretty fucking strong. Oh uh, man. Yes, yeah, I got things seven. to do. I know. I'm gonna uh. use all the things. May the dice gods be with me. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would have been amazing. It would have. Oh, man. I was waiting for it, too. I was waiting for that 20 to pop up. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. Uh, so, Frey, you are able to sweep the leg and knock him down, which consequently makes him no longer uh, grabbing onto that wear guard. I didn't say I was trying to knock him down. I thought that was the whole point of this. What were you trying to do then? <laughs> no, I'm just were you not trying to knock him pro? <laughs> That's, that's what pro means. I know. All right. Yeah, so you knock him down, and uh, Edmund is no longer uh, holding this Dwerger in play. The Dwerger's currently in place, but as we mentioned, the Dwerger does get to go next. You still have your movement, otherwise it will be its turn next. She goes to the back corner. Right there. Yep. Just waits. Yeah. Contemplates removing one of Edmund's fingers. <laughs> My goodness. Um, Alright, so the hammerer has to spend half its movement just standing up out of these gears. And um, essentially, it's still confused about what just happened, but it the last thing it saw was Frey uh, tripping and knocking down Dirt Sunflight. So uh, it turns and immediately runs... Uh, after her, which I believe triggers an attack of opportunity from Thimbleweed if he wants to use it. Of course. Uh, <laughs> it be with my bow, or is that the, like, a melee? Um, I think if your bow would be disadvantaged, he's in melee when he leaves. Alright. Oh, I mean, I'll assume I have my bow. Uh, I'll do disadvantage on that. Oof. Oof. 11 is pretty bad. You know what? I'm actually going to give him... I'm going to make him roll a check to get out of this gear situation, because he was in a very awkward position to even try to escape out of here first. So he's going to have to roll a... Uh, just a DC 10 athletics check. We'll just see if he's able to get himself out of these gear system he's in. Yeah, give your guys easy checks. Yeah. All right, he is. Well, I gave him a chance to get stuck in there, basically. I was just going to have him waltz out of there. 
Um, and now he does waltz out of there. Thibweed misses the attack, and he goes after Frey, thinking to protect uh, Edmund. He tries to attack you with the claw. Miss. And a miss, and he tries to smash you with the hammer. Danger! Danger! Uh, 16 hits. saved your life. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> yeah, you did, ironically. Uh, for 11 bludgeoning damage, and this is the thanks you get. <laughs> and then it is Celeste's turn. That is a lot of stuff. It was. <laughs> it is an emotional roller coaster. Okay. Yikes. Celeste does not know who the villain is. <laughs> You're all bad guys. She attacks Edmund. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does look like a Dwarger, so it's mm -hmm. easy to mistake him for one of the bad guys. Okay. Alright, so Dwarger <laughs> is over here. Prey attacking Prey. <laughs> Made it through the entire round it's unscathed so far. <laughs> ultimately happened. It's just been a bunch of internal drama. It has. It's, it's a family drama. It's, it's been a lot of, yeah. Been, it's also got nothing to do with him. It's just a lot of our own. <laughs> it stuff just it just triggered, on. yeah, it triggered the the <laughs> the ongoing drama yeah. with the party. All right, Celeste, uh, like sits down to have just like a chat with everyone. <laughs> and has, like a like a stick. It's like the talking stick, and she gives yep. it to the Dwerger. Anyway. <laughs> um, Okay, no, you so, put me in so, this engine, didn't ask for my consent. I think we're still attacking him, so... Some of you are. I... Uh, okay, so then I'm gonna come and uh, hit him with my mop for six bludgeoning damage. And then... I will spend a key point to make two unarmed strikes. That was all hit. Yeah. That was a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, he's got some armor, but you are breaking through his armor and punching him like square in the nose. Just pack, pack, pack. Excellent. He is still up, but looking very bloodied. My goodness, the end of the most incredible round of combat I've ever seen in all of our just years of D&D, I think. Just so much drama with a single random ass enemy. <laughs> Edmund, I am so thrilled to know what are you going to do on your turn now? I look um, Ray in the eye and I uh, stab the Dwerger. Well, I attempt to. You attempt to, yeah. Well, yeah. While staring at Bray. Yeah. I love it. You know what, Edmund? I'm going to give you advantage because this Dwerger still hasn't regarded you as hostile. So it is not actually properly defending against your attack. And unfortunately, now you know a 16 does not hit. <laughs> but good effort. <laughs> As you manifest your blade and try to swing it at him and... Finally, he's like, hey, danger! <laughs> Shh, I'm pretending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, roll a deception check. <laughs> Try to play it off like you're like purpose, purposely <laughs> missing. Yeah. All right, oh well, God. it's not very insightful. <laughs> wow. oh. so to be fair, it's got a spike sticking into its brain. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. It seems to uh, almost accept your reasoning as you're like just passing along without knowing the context of why you'd be doing this. Uh, assuming you're done, it's Thimbleweed. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm done. All right. Well, now he, now he's out of the gear. <laughs> the moral quandary is over. I guess at the end of the day, Thimbleweed did get his way. So. Yes, I win! <laughs> Once again, Thimbleweed is victorious. Uh, you didn't do anything. 
<laughs> Didn't I? 29 does hit, good god. I'm gonna swarm him back into the gear. <laughs> Turns out Thimbleweed is the mastermind this whole time. And then he rides the elevator up and traps you all down. <laughs> Last thing you see are just double middle fingers. This was always the plan. <laughs> Uh, for nine damage. All right. And I'll do it again for eleven damage. That was Ooh, a that doesn't hit. That was a very miss attack, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Your miss is an eleven. That's insane. All right. Well, I won. That's what really matters. <laughs> Love it. The chat has gone all uh, break it, Ralph. Edvin, you are a bad guy, but doesn't mean you are a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Satan. Varavin. Uh, all right, Varavin is furiously crossing out passages now. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing all like the last like two pages of, of story away. Yeah. Uh, it was a dream sequence. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, that's a good idea. Actually, he, he doesn't cross it all out. Now, it's one of those mov moments in movies where you, the character's been imagining yeah. what, what would have happened in their head. It's like a horror scene, and then it yeah. shifts back to here. And then it shifts back to now. Final yep. destination. Um, and instead... That's what really happened. Oh, what really happened. <laughs> that's right. Uh... <laughs> He's going to, even though this creature can barely understand it, probably, um, he's going to begin write, writing passages about uh, the <clears throat> sheer stupidity of this creature and how, amongst all of this internal drama, it has no idea what is going on. It's just mm -hmm. acting on instinct. And he is going to viciously mock the thing. Which I didn't actually roll it. <clears throat> Oh, he does not have great wisdom save. Um, is this any kind of condition, or it's just damage, right? Just damage. And he he has disadvantage on his next attack. But... If he fails, which he definitely which he does. does. <laughs> oh boy. Not a very wise creature with a spike in his brain. Yep. Uh, yes, not only that, but you... Um... <laughs> You see, he turns towards you with still that weird, scary expression, but his eyes flicker, and all of a sudden you see the pupils reappear as he looks at you, and you almost think like he's, he's, you, you suddenly reached him, the inside, and a single tear comes down his eye, he goes, Aah! and he falls down dead. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> he kills me with vicious mockery. Well, here you go. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he realized that his existence was <laughs> unnatural. Yes. Yes, indeed. And then the area is quiet. And you guys, despite making some sounds in here, uh, no guards came rushing or anything like that. And you do hear the sounds of like loud machinery and metalworking and things that probably help muffle a lot of the normal uh, combat sounds you would be hearing. Now it's awkward. Now we're all like just in this room yeah, together. It's... Yeah. <laughs> now you got to deal with the fallout of what just happened. If you're happy with what you just witnessed, we should have put him out of his misery faster. You would have broken the elevator. <laughs> that is the important part. We could have fixed it. Well, let us continue. I will continue my role and. But don't think I was happy to do it, okay? <laughs> yes, yes. Mm. We're we're always so concerned with your happiness. <laughs> You're always talking about your happiness. For <laughs> once, can we not talk about it, please? <laughs> uh, Let's just go through this door. He's he's gonna wake up every short rest or long rest and disguise himself as dearth, and just that's his new personality. I think. <laughs> All right, you're opening the door to the north. 
He's a little upset. He doesn't care. Nice. I like it. Whether he opens the door slowly or not. You crash that door open. Well, if anyone cares, I do think this chapter is salvageable, at least. Of your book you're referencing? <laughs> <laughs> Standing in the middle of the room, facing the double door to the north, is a seven-foot-tall statue of a female Dwerger in a scale male robe. The top of her head above the eyes has been sheared off, making space for a stone brazier that gives off a flickering flame. Chained to the statue's pedestal is an emaciated, malformed creature with rubber, rubbery, purplish-gray flesh that's badly burned in several places, a bulbous head with a metal plate bolted over most of its mouth, and sinister eyes that instantly flick in your direction. And, uh, Edmund, as Dirth, as you walk into this room, the creatures, um, in your mind, you hear a voice that says, I see you. Ask yourself. You are a prisoner here. Yes. That's it. Let me, um, I don't know what to do about this thing. It looks pretty ugly. It does. Can I, can I uh, stab it a little bit, I guess? <laughs> I don't have the, uh, here if I can do this, can just control Z work. How do you do the thing where you show the token, Chris? Shipsy? Uh, Shipsy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it looks like this, but minus the armor, and it's got horrible wounds all over it, and it doesn't have any of these tentacles. They've been cut off, and it's got metal plates bolted around to its head and over most of its mouth. Oh. And it's chained up, and looks like it has, like, been tortured and malnourished. That's a little messed up. Yeah. Do you need saving? You look like them, but are not. Looks can be deceiving. Yes. Don't worry about now, why are you chained up? Prisoner. Captured from the Underdark by these uppity slaves. You're not providing a convincing argument as to why I should save you. I can help you. He called out to the other guys. Guys, come and look at this ugly thing over here. <laughs> Fascinating. And it, keep in mind, uh, even if you're talking to it, um, it seems to sense your thoughts and responding, and it's only responding in your head. It's not speaking directly to you. Mm. It's got a plate over its mouth, right? Correct. Well, I guess... Yeah. yeah. You, you see there's like a little corner of it you think maybe to like so it can eat or s still, but it's, yeah, mostly been, um, it, honestly, I'm kind of reminded of like Nebula, how she kind of has like metal pieces all over her oh, yeah, body yeah, a little yeah. bit. But this is less like enhancing cyborg and more like just torturous. Device. Yeah. yeah. What is this thing exactly? What is this thing? This is a good question. I can tell you nothing about it. Operation would be Arcana or Nature Check. Arcana or Nature Check. Um, but if you're asking it specifically... One of the Masters once we ruled over everyone now reduced to the dark below what 
Well, Robin must have read a book about mind flayers at some point. Uh, yeah, you do. Um, even it's hard to tell because it's been badly damaged and mutilated. But yeah, you recognize a creature that um, an illithid, or also known as a mind flayer, is a um, oppressive dominating creature that is highly intelligent and has psionic spell casting capabilities and also eats brains and it feeds on like the brains of sentient creatures and its whole thing is like enslaving and controlling others you're also i think we've um we did this before whenever we rolled first on the dwergar the dwergar's whole backstory is intertwined with mind flayers like they the mind flayers enslave the dwergers and then the Dwergers actually rose up, and you recognize this statue of their deity, who was one of the um, uh, figures in their history that helped them rise up and cast the, the chains of slavery and oppression off and escape from the Mind Flayers. And even some of the Dwergers were able to steal some of their psionic powers and gain them. And um, her symbol is literally like a Mind Flayer skull, so it's like very much ingrained. Oh, right. Yeah, and, yeah, and you remember there were skulls. skulls. Yep, okay. exactly, yeah, set up. And so, and you see this creature has been uh, literally like a chained up, tortured prisoner um, right next to the statue. So this creature is one of the old masters, now turned torture victim. What cruel, dramatic irony. <laughs> You non Dwergar. We are simply representatives of the area. Are you aware that your captors are building some sort of weapon of mass destruction in this place? Yes. Well, as you might imagine, the citizens of this area are not, uh, quite happy with that development. And we are here on their behalf. Seems to close his eyes for a moment and then opens them. So he has made enemies of the surface. Quite a few, in fact. Good. I, but perhaps bad for him, but I doubt good for your kind. I doubt he will ever return to slavery, but uh, perhaps we can end his current reign of terror and your current uh, tortured existence, perhaps. Yes, destroy him. He takes pleasure in... I torture. Uh, we're all going to turn to the, everyone else at this point. Like, uh, what say we? This creature is clearly not benevolent in nature, but um, he does seem to share our current common goal. Shall we uh, ally ourselves with him for the time being? He's like half dead. Leave him be. Uh, with a 16, am I aware of what he's capable of? Uh, what do our house rules of say on that? Yeah. Like how much help he could be? Yeah. Unique attacks and traits. Yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned, you know Mind Flayers are capable of psionic... Um, uh, spells, usually they uh, involve uh, literally dominating and controlling um, other creatures. Just by looking at him, you know he wouldn't be able to attack with his tentacles because he doesn't fucking have them. Um, and you know that he would have some kind of mind blast attack, kind of similar to what Celeste is capable of, but doing a lot more damage, um, as well as um, spells. But you also notice that I mean, he's just, he's chained up. He's not unconscious or anything, so you can wonder why he's not using them. And then you notice that he has literally metal plates, like, bolted onto his head in places. Oh. 
well, um, that, the, so at that point, I uh, maybe I'd just ask him. Um, yeah. Exactly, though, my friend, what help might you offer us? It seems your current uh, faculties have been quite impaired by these torturous devices. So, unfortunately, she's not here at the moment, but um, we're going to time this with Celeste coming through this door, and his eyes would immediately flick to hers, and you see his eyes grow wide. He says, That one has the touch of my kind. Its mind is stronger. And it possesses a crystal. And he, he kind of flicks his eyes at her direction hungrily. Relinquish it to me. It will restore my powers they cut from me. Are you just eating popcorn? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh boy. But the, the crystal that's the crystal that gives Celeste telepathy right now? The yeah. Mind thing? Ooh, okay. Which, um, to do an interesting callback previously on, way back the way yeah. she got the crystal was she saw a skull that looked like a Mind Flayer skull, and inside was this crystal. In so her and I went across oh. that chasm. Yeah. And then I Not had that to fight it was her because like she an went cray Another, uh, the earliest version of our intramural, uh, intramural. Right. <laughs> a little, uh... Yeah, a little civil war. Um, so based on that then, do we think that if we give him this crystal that he will like implant it in his own head? It's gonna be something something with like it. You're not sure what the mechanics of it are, but he yeah. seems to explain that if he has possession of that crystal, it would restore him. The whole crystal? Yes. Or just part of the crystal, because you just said the crystal doesn't mean it's the whole crystal. Sometimes when my kind dies, our mind's power is crystallized. We can use it to enhance ourselves, but in this case, it would restore what I lost. I mean, if we break a part of the crystal off and give that to him, then he can restore just a little bit. <laughs> Some tiny bit. <laughs> just enough to make sure you don't try to kill us. I want Zardarok dead. You look like the best way for that to occur. You're I... Probably the only people you have seen who could do this. So that is not a very good argument. That's fair. <laughs> Batman. Yes. Would you like a snack? I mean, there's a dead guy back there. We can go bring you a snack. Yes. Those ones in the suit. Not much brain left. But it will help. Okay. I'll go get you a snack. <laughs> Boy. Phrase on board with this real quick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you pop the guy's head off or try and drag the whole thing? <laughs> I'm just gonna like rip him out of the suit like I was gonna do before, except for yeah. now he's limp, so he'll come right out. It's it's pretty hard. It's it's pretty gross too when you come the out. Lobster. <laughs> it's it's like it's it's not a pretty picture. It doesn't like just pop out. I mean it is like I mean he's probably in rear mortis too, so it's all just like cracking and breaking and just it's it's that, awful. It's a horrifying phaser. experience, but yeah. Yeah, right. done phaser. That's right. why she went back into the other room to do it while they were all in there trying to figure out yeah, what to do yeah. with that guy. But like, is he whole? Like, he's got arms, hands, feet, fingers, toes. The Dwarger body? Yeah. Uh, ish. Plain ish. How? Mangled, maybe? He's very mangled, yeah, I'll say that. Alright. But yeah, he's got all his limbs. Alright, well, I'll bring him in, but he's short a couple fingers. Okay. Right. Nobody notices. Uh, it's a very, it's, you almost have to feed him like a, like a invalid because he doesn't have his tentacles or anything and most of his mouth's covered. So he literally has to like 
you gotta get like a straw into the brain kind of a thing going on and just just get a well, spoon I mean, and he's scoop got brain hands. he can do it he's he fine. does yeah as long as you're bringing him it close he can kind of claw like open the skull and it's it's yeah. horrifying to watch him just pick these little bits of brain and get him in a little corner of his mouth great it's never enough hunger I mean, this one here has a big brain. You know, he likes to think that he does. <laughs> Points at Val Robin. I'm pretty sure that one has a bigger, bigger brain than I do. He puts to Edmund. <laughs> <laughs> He's the scientist. I'm just the diplomat. So I don't... <laughs> My brain still has much use of it. Uh, well, unfortunately, I can't. I mean, I don't. I don't feel like we could. Get consent for Celeste, who's not here, to give up her crystal. Uh, I, 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 I think I don't know if I'd be on board or not. To be honest with you, what would uh, Celeste do? What would Celeste do? Uh, Celeste she's probably, not going to give up that damn crystal. No, she probably would not be on board. She tried with, to like, tackle me off a freaking mountain to get that damn thing from yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, perhaps. Perhaps once our uh, friend is able to uh, converse with you properly, we will um, discuss the matter of restoring yourself. But for the time being, my friend, you must trust that the five of us will, in fact, enact the vengeance that you seek. So in that uh, spirit, what information can you provide us that might uh, enable our endeavor? Door ahead, and he nods this double door, leads directly into the forge. There are many Dwergar. The forge is guarded by watchtowers. There that is sounds not like not a promising entrance. Yeah. The throne room is across from the forge, and the passage to the Underdark beyond that. This door, however, he indicates again the same one right here, is locked. Zardarok grows increasingly paranoid with each passing day. But there is a secret message that takes you into the interrogation chamber. And he indicates with one creepy clawed hand to the southeast corner. Beyond, I do not know. So is that southeast corner being over here? This is the square down here? Uh, to this square down here, yeah. He mentions this room over here is just a storage space. Okay. Would it help if we brought you Zadarak's head whenever he's dead? I would feast upon his brains. Well, duh. I just watched <laughs> you do that to this other guy. <laughs> Zadarak is a very strong for a Dwergar. Cases himself in this. He seems to struggle with the word. Crystal. It's ancient. Powerful. Uh, he encases himself in it, you said? Armor. Oh dear. Is it you said crystal, but it is in it is is it in fact black obsidian looking? Yes. Wonderful. He has a shardle in armor set. That's just... Yes, that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrifying. Thank you. Uh, 
and what about these two doors on the side here? You t to either side of the the main doors. Yeah, he, he indicates they're just more storage rooms. It basically, oh, okay. full of uh, like weapons and clothing and and crap. So he's he's okay. basically put, been put in the like. I mean, it is a statue of the their you know a religious figure they idolize, but this is mainly just like a little warehouse section that they fucking chained him up okay. in. Okay. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but the uh, proposition of making our way through their secret tunnels appeals to me. Surely they don't. They they won't expect intruders from that direction. That's Remy. Uh, can I look around down here, see what I can see by way of secret entrances? Now that you've been alerted to a secret door being here, without even a check, yes, you can see that there is a false wall that's leading into this eastern door. And it's a simple matter of, like, finding the little loose panel and kind of pushing it, and the whole door kind of pushes in, and then you can slide it over. Okay. Are you doing that? Yes, we... Yeah, let's do okay. it. An alarm immediately starts to sound. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, he seems to call back in your mind, and he kind of does this, like, group chat thing with the mind. He says, if that one gives the crystal, I will give her answers. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> if we knew Celeste, that might be tempting, huh? Yeah, because from what we know, she doesn't have any memory of whatever happened to her. Mm hmm All right. Uh, we can uh, wait yeah. and let her make the decision. Yeah. But... We'll, we'll put that on the back burner for now, Mr. Mind Flayer. <laughs> <laughs> what is your hey. name, by the way? Do you have a name? I don't know if yes. Mind Flayer's He, like, snaps at you. Fioral is my name. Well, Mr. Fioral. We will uh, continue with our adventure and convalesce with you at a later date to discuss the matter of the crystals. <laughs> I'll be here. <laughs> I suppose we could we could let, we could release him, right? Like we don't need to like. That's it. Yeah. Da -da -da. I mean, at this point, he's just he's he seems kind of pathetic. He's just got plates all over his body. It's keeping him from being any kind of threat. Yeah. Uh, and he might be helpful to us if if things start going down. Yeah. What? What? How is he chained right now? Like, how is he uh, held held up? Like man, like manacle chained, and it seems to be attached to the uh, pedestal. So you hmm. feel like you could either um, lock pick it, or honestly, you could probably just smash it with some kind of blunt object or something. Um, and with all the noise around you, you don't think it would. What he would. Here, I mean, it literally, that's probably the sound that you hear, like, ringing out of everywhere yeah. is this, like, metal-on-metal metal smashing sound. Uh, Miss Frey, would you mind? He just points the chain. Okay. No funny business. She looks at him. I am deadly serious at all times. Whatever. And... Never been <laughs> funny in my life. <laughs> okay, Batman. <laughs> Going more a Drax angle, but Drax is actually pretty funny, yeah. incidentally. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she'll swing, break the chain. Batman isn't very funny at all, is he? He's a very dour... Mm -hmm. I'm actually... Fun fact, I'm actually re-watching Batman the Animated Series right now. I bought the Blu-rays. Oh, of man, <laughs> that's good, Batman. He's kind of funny. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a good Batman. <laughs> He's kind of funny. I, I still wish they would actually make a live action movie series yeah. that was actually he's, like. He's got, he's got some really solid dry one liners. Yeah. Where he's not. He, he's. Yeah. He's kind of. Yeah. Also, is he funny I, because we're adults now? Or is yeah. he funny because it's actually funny and a kid would find it funny? No, he's got like. Like, he. Like, he's not making a joke, but he says something very funny in a very serious tone. <laughs> so, so that's what makes it funny. That's right. kind of the way a lot of his jokes work. I like that Art Deco, like, yeah, like, it's great retro future 1920s look too. That's yep. that's a really cool world. Give me that Batman movie. 
Yeah, with like, even though it's like technically, maybe with present like 19, day, but no, no, it's like 1940s cars with like Zeppelins flying overhead. It's, the Zeppelins? Yeah. yeah. But there's like modern day technology. Everyone has like Uzis and like, uh. I thought it was like Tommy guns. Guy. Is it really Uzis? Uh. Welcome to our yeah, Batman the Animated just, Series podcast. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay. Focus. All right. Are you smashing guess, the chains? Guess, yeah, yeah. Go, go. Yes, I smash All right, the smash chains. the chains. All right, ring. Yeah, he smashy. he falls forward a bit and then um, stretches up, and he is very still. He was kind of hunched over the whole time. He's very imposingly tall, but very rail thin. Although it looks like a bit of color has come back. Um, actually, he doesn't have color come back. It it, it gets like a little mucusy on his skin since he fed on that little bit of brain. Um, he just kind of looks and he doesn't thank anybody, but he just kind of looks and just nods like a show of respect. And he still, his eyes are still flickering at Celeste and the crystal very hung, very eagerly, but he stays very still and careful. It might be safer for you if you wait in there. She'll just point to like one of the storage rooms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he'll, he'll nod to that. If you hear any danger, any combat, or major ruckus happening, and you happen to be able to help, I, we wouldn't turn it down, but otherwise we will see you more than likely once this is all over and done with. Nods and says, I can still contact you far within distance on that <laughs> 120 <laughs> feet i believe yeah i don't remember what it is but well keep trying and uh if we don't contact you back then we're not in range i would kill him sooner than later if you value your surface world indeed You don't have any information on how far along this weapon, this mechanical dragon of his is, do you? He hasn't happened to mention it to you. He mentions it every goddamn day. Oh, wonderful. It is almost ready. Almost ready in the sense that we're going to have to fight it. <laughs> I don't know if I would chance a long rest at this point. <laughs> Maybe, a, I don't know, a long rest would be risky. Yes, indeed. All right, I think that's it for him then. We'll continue on down this secret path. Okay. Um, yeah, you see the uh, section of the door opens up, revealing a pretty small, dark tunnel that just goes uh, east. Celeste is back, so if she wants to have that conversation oh. with the Mind Flayer right now, she can. That is true. I do, I do not have a camera placement that is Sans Reese, I just realized. Yeah. Deal with this one. Um, okay, so, so to catch you up, um, everybody met a mind flayer that has been tortured, mutilated, malnourished by the Dwergar. These are generally evil, um, brain-eating, monster-dominating creatures that once ruled more of the world but have been driven underground and um, have been known to uh, travel inter-between worlds as well, but their empire has since fallen. Um, and they used Dwergers as slaves, but the Dwergers rose up against them, and, um, now the Dwergers are all about killing Mind Flayers as much as they can. And you all met this one, who's been, obviously, very keen on your whole plan of taking out Zardarok, because Zardarok has been torturing him and having, having him captured. And you all just freed him, but he has been paying a special, a special attention to you, Celeste, and mentioned the fact that he feels the touch of his kind upon you. And also, he has felt the Psy Crystal in your possession and has requested that you relinquish it to him so that it would restore his own powers. And then at the end, near the end of the conversation, he also said that if you gave it to him, he would give you answers. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, Sorry, baby screaming in the background. Oh no, not helpful. Um, answers to what? Pray tell. To what happened to you? Your mind has been enhanced. Yes. I've noticed that I do have quite the, quite the strong special mind, if I do say so myself, but I, I don't think this is something I should be giving to you. What, why do you want this crystal exactly? What does it do for you? You indeed have a strong mind to survive. The process and to come out stronger and still intact. The crystal represents a fallen one of my kind. It can be used to enhance one of my kind or, in my case, restore what they cut from me. What, what did they cut from you exactly? My own psionic powers. All I have is the telepathic speech. I see. But these other people don't seem to like you very much. Why is that? It seems like if I give you this side crystal, it might be... I, are you going to do some bad things with it? I would like very much to help kill some of these Dwergar. See Zardarok destroyed and his home buried and his children destroyed. He just kind of goes off on this like rant of anger. <laughs> oh boy. I am ultimately not very comfortable with this. Um, <laughs> drink, strong, strong yeah, coming all strong. <laughs> uh, I leave. I know. What happened to you? Give me the crystal. I will give you answers. Right. So the thing is, I think I'm doing okay, even though I don't exactly know what happened to me. So I'm gonna have to say no. But thank you. <laughs> he looks like he's about to take an angry step towards you and then immediately looks around at all of you and just kind of rests his hands at his side and sighs. He's still very tall and imposing. Very, very well. But perhaps we will speak again after this is done. Perhaps I am looking forward it, sir. <laughs> All right. He returns to his storage home. <laughs> Go back in your closet. Yeah. Your yeah. So you guys basically freed him but told him to basically hide in a closet until it all boils over. That was easier than I thought. I mean, <laughs> he he's surrounded by you guys. Sure. And uh, you, you think Mind Flayers are pretty powerful, but he literally has lost all his things, all his powers, and he looks extremely damaged and exhausted. Like, he was just in real bad shape, so he knew he did not have a, much of a leg to stand on there. Yeah. All right, uh, you all can continue down the secret tunnel. Go ahead and start the MVPC poll, by the by. Mm. Um, and as you come down, you see that the end of it, um, 
is this weird, like the tunnel, at the very end of the tunnel, suddenly the walls become this like, um, it's like you're on the inside of a, of a like a, a cylinder shaped door. Almost like you walked into a tube or something. But you hear voices um, without even rolling a perception check. And you hear a howl of pain followed by a booming voice. It says, You will tell me who dare conspire against me, Captain. And another um, more uh, a, a feminine voice says, Please, my lord, I serve only you. But I, I, I have suspect the woman, uh, the Mutskart leader, uh, Grand. Ah! And you hear another scream of pain. And then that same first voice says, Silence! I will not hear ill of Grandolfa. If you will not tell me truth by tonight, I feed you to the Mind Flayer. And you hear the door, uh, a door slam shut. But you continue to hear the sounds of um, pain from within. And you hear the sound uh, of... We just, we just missed the king. We got caught the king right, right in that room. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cutscene that shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't give us a chance to jump in there and be uh, like... <laughs> surprise! <laughs> yep. <laughs> we're, we're not that level yet. We, can't, we, can't, we don't actually get to fight the final boss. We just get to see him from a distance. <laughs> Well, all we gotta do is wait till tonight, and he'll be back to feed her to the mind player. Right. Um. All right. But, but, uh, but you do right, see I'll, that I'll, the, I'll, the, the, the 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 sorry, you do see that the the weird tube thing you ended at does look like it's a door that can open. It's just like it okay. kind of opens out like this. Um, Barovino mo motion to Edmund again. To, Perhaps you might go in the room first, just in case there are any uh, guards waiting. We will be right behind you, of course, to sally ho and ambush any threats that might be present. Maybe. Sure. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, where's the door? I'll open it. Yep, um, all the way at the end of the tunnel to the east. Okay, um, so you open it again. This is a very odd, like it's like you're opening a tube. Like you're pulling apart this like outer area and you quickly realize is it opens up um, in what appears to be a sarcophagus standing upright that you've opened up and essentially are now standing in. Um, braziers of glowing hot coals light this room, the walls of which are lined with closed iron sarcophagi standing on uh, ends, which um, you recall the classic Iron Maiden torture, although the one you just stepped out of has no teeth or anything in it, so just has a secret tunnel behind you. On the far wall, a Dwerger has been shackled with chains attached to the wall. Her flesh is covered with blisters, and a pair of hooded Dwerger prod her with hot iron rods, searing her flesh, causing her to bellow in agony. Um, currently, the two Dwerger are doing the torturing of their backs to you, so they don't see you. And the ca and the uh, the captured Dwergar is just currently reeling from pain, so not really paying attention to the to a sarcophagus opening up. He walks through. Ha ha ha! This decor gets me all the time. I like it. They they both turn around very suddenly, and you can see they've got their um, these daggers. They're like seem to be glowing with energy. Um, which you have um, recognized these before as certain Dwergar who have some kind of psionic powers are capable of wielding daggers that can actually um, inflict like psychic damage. And they've also got these oh. in their other hand. There's these just hot rods they're using to just poke her <laughs> out of these goals. They both say, hey, Prince, Prince Darth. Tell me, how goes the interrogation? Um, they look flabbergasted for a second, but then they nod and says, uh, Yes, uh, Captain, not talking. But I've been instructed to keep at it. While he's talking to them, can I like motion for everyone else to like get come here and get ready to like jump these dudes? Sure, yeah. Shh. 
she not talking, you say? Oh, um, she keeps wanting to implicate uh, the other, the clan leader, the uh, your father's hopeful uh, new wife. Divine. Dear she, this may call for some interrogation of my own. Oh, God. <laughs> Where are the gears? <laughs> Where are the gears? <laughs> the gears of war. <laughs> Hand me one of those. And he reaches out for the hot rod. Yeah, yeah. They nod and seem um this uh, this seems completely in character for Dearth, so they, they're like, Yep, here you go. <laughs> yeah. Leave it with me. Go take a five minute break. <laughs> You don't want to see what's coming next. Uh, roll a dis. Hmm. Roll a persuasion check with advantage. I can't. Can I? Mm -hmm. I don't know if he has to hear me for my for this for my bardic inspiration to go off. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not positive. But can I from from this hallway listening to this conversation? And then writing, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> writing about his. Uh, you yep. You can't understand this. We're speaking. Oh of. yeah, you're right. I can't. You don't know what is. You don't know what's going on, but I mean, you could still, if you're just aware of. The... I feel like I, I feel like I would still be at least aware enough to know that he's, you know, playing at the being the prince. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, you know. Oh. oh no, he used it. Oh lord. <laughs> oh, that's real bad. <laughs> that's a real bad roll. A one. I don't even know if you want to use your embark inspiration on that. That's. I mean, there's always a chance. That there's Eric always a chance. Roll. There's always there a chance. Woof. Right. No nope. not a chance. It's not a chance. Yikes. Yeah. They both look and say, "Sorry, my prince. We are. We work for." Your father directly said not to leave, not to stop. All right, then. You will have to take it up with him. There's not enough time. He wants this information. We must get this information. Uh, yeah, what are the rest of you doing? Uh, can I try to, like, message him using the message spell? Sure. And just sort of try to, like, tell him and, like, see, perhaps see if you can, um, advance further in the room and turn their backs to us. At least then we might have a, a moment of, uh, surprise upon them. I'm sorry, what is this thing in the middle? What is that a table? It's a classic like torture rack. Um mm -hmm. set up in Stretches the middle. People out. Yep, yep. Stretcher. Mm -hmm. And there's a door to the north and a door to the south in this room. Okay. Help me put her on this table. Um Okay, they they'll agree to that. They take her down from the she looks very badly injured and tortured. And uh, she actually looks at you with kind of pleading eyes and says, Prince Dirth, please, I've been nothing but loyal to your father. The face. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> God. He is deep undercover, He is man. deep <laughs> undercover. <laughs> we do the questioning here. That's right. <laughs> and then he grabs her and, and throws her onto a table and summons or um, uh, signals to the other two, step around and help me get her on this. Uh, table. Okay, yeah. They're both so right now they're both paying attention to the table and kind of attaching her limbs to the uh rack. This is how you get this rod hot. And he throws it into the brazier. Mm-hmm. You give me the other one. Throw it in there too. Yep. Alright. Go on, go on. Step around and help me. Yeah, yeah, they're they are they're paying, they're focused on that task. So what are the rest of you guys? <laughs> um, yeah, if I see, yeah, as I was trying to like motion everybody, if I see that that like he's 
uh, Edmund's doing it, yeah. uh, getting them to like not look at us at the, <laughs> the side of the room. Yep. Um, he'll motion to Frey right behind him and uh, Thimbleweed and Celeste behind her to like just, you know, go. <laughs> Kill him. Time to go. Okay. Just launch into a surprise round? I, I think so, right? Like just, just, gonna just come in the room swinging. If this guy's gonna be right here, Frey would just have Celeste throw her right at him. Nice. The fastball special. Yeah. yeah. In the hallway. Just yeah. out of the hall. Just. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's a good stopping point then. Um, before we before we start this combat encounter, but um, that yes. way we can we can end here and start uh, the next session with a with another combat fight. Um, Edmund, once again, your increasingly horrifying Dwergar shenanigans have won you the MVP C poll. For throwing us all into a moral crisis for a yeah. round of combat. And I will give you a point of inspiration also for just everything in this session, I think. <laughs> I, wasn't, well, I wasn't sure how to do the inspiration thing with all you guys like fighting each other. That got a little... like I don't know how to... I don't want to necessarily reward this, but I like the role-playing, so... But at least with Raymond, it's, it's easy going through all that stuff. Oh, man. You discover another gemstone... <laughs> Somewhere along the way. Right. We're making more Shardlin balls. <laughs> right. That's true. Yeah, the money. They yeah. each worth 10 GP. All right. So that will do it for this week's session of Rhyme of the Frostbane. Thank you to Chris, Heather, Rochelle, Raymond, and Reese for playing. Thank you to all the wonderful fans for watching. And thank you to the patrons. Shout out to Platinum Patrons, Joe, Will, Ty and Dancer, Christopher, Thomas, Adam, Stan, Nathan, Alex, Cam, William, I'm Loud, Al, and Furcon. And gold patrons, RPG, Papercrafts, Pretty Boy, and Yuma, Marcus, Dead Lizard, Lounge, Sam, Olympi, Spuds, Jerome, Sklinny, Blood, Angel, Vronis, Baboon, Baboon, Nathan, Fazlika, Tortoise, James, and Kyle. We're live streaming our D&D adventures every week, and we will see you all next time. It is not. It is not okay. <laughs> I, I need you to find some secondary outro music yeah, that is like oh, dour. Yeah. We only really need two. Like the on the road happy music and the like tense we're in the middle of a situation. Yeah, this is a serious episode end. <laughs> we need the cliffhanger music. Exactly. Not the uh, the happy ending music. <laughs>